Welcome to Translogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. On this show we like to focus on forward thinking modes of transportation. Now sometimes these can be on the water, sometimes they can be kind of unique, sometimes they can be a whole lot of fun. And in today's case, well, they're all three. So we're down here in beautiful Coronado and I'm with the CEO and the founder of Aquatic Aviation, Paul Bolker, mate. Well, obviously the flyboard was the, the first one that came out. Yeah. We tested it a couple of years ago. The flyboard is something from Iron Man. Now you've got the hoverboard from Back to the Future. I mean, people love this stuff. How does the hoverboard differ from the flyboard? The flyboard is more of a vertical product. So it's about going high, performing aerial tricks, spins, backflips, flying, I guess you could say. The hoverboard, it's more like a wakeboard with the jet on it or a snowboard, but this main steering is in your front foot, so it's a little something to get used to. All right, well, anyone can buy one of these, but you do need your own personal watercraft, like a jet ski or a, a sea dude. Yeah, that's correct. And, and now it's becoming more known that it's actually not that difficult to install. And it hooks to any Yamaha, sea dude Kawasaki, or Honda models 10 years or younger. I mean, you take off the braking system, and you take off the jet flow nozzle, you put on an adapter plate, and then the U-pipe actually redirects the water to the hose which comes out the bottom of your feet. All right, well all this talk about flyboarding and hoverboarding has got me pretty excited. Okay, let's go have a go. <laughs> right, let's so, so I'm gonna teach you a little bit about how to hoverboard. Okay. okay. So the first thing you want to do um, is you want, when you get in the water, you want to put your back foot in the strap, yep. okay? And you kind of want to lay on it, okay? And then I'm gonna give you some throttle. And so when you start going, you want to push down that nose, yep. okay? And then you want to bring your right foot up and you want to put it in that front strap. And then once you feel that your the board's a little bit out of the water and it's getting on the plane, then you can just stand up on the board. It's as simple as that. You're up. <laughs> So it's almost like surfing in a way, like exactly. you're just sort of popping up and then, you, then you're going to get up. Exactly, and be okay. yeah. But when I get up, what's the principle then? Because is it more like snowboarding or is it all more like surfing? Where do you put your weights? I think it's more like snowboarding. You know, when you're going forward and you lean on your toes and you want to use your left foot, remember, to steer, and then that will pull you around. But when you're on your heels, it's how you do a back turn. So lean whichever way you want to go. Right, essentially. exactly. Okay. What happens? Because you've got a jet right behind you. If you lean right back like if that. You, if you lean back too far on your back and shift your weight too far back, then you're going to go back. The board's going to go straight up in the air and you're going to just fall off the board. Just fall off the board. Yeah. Right. And how long do you think it will take me to figure out how to do a backflip or a clizzle? <laughs> Couple tries. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Couple tries. Well, that was my first, I guess, 20 minutes that I've been out there. I got up on my second try, which I'm a bit proud of. I haven't landed any of my tricks yet, but I gave it a shot. I've got to say, though, this is super easy to pick up quick. I reckon in a very short period of time, you could become pretty impressive regardless of your skill level. Well, the Sea-Doo that we're using today looks incredibly fast. When you're transferring all that power from that Sea-Doo through to a board underneath your feet, is it too much power or is it just enough? Well, no, the power is based on the throttle. You know, the guy on the jet ski controls the throttle and controls how much propulsion goes to the board. If you install the electronic management kit, which is a separate accessory, then the person on the board can actually control the throttle. The hoverboard is designed to go around 23 miles per hour. And how high up? You can go probably about 20, 25 feet. And that's professionals, you know, yeah. that's someone that's been doing it. I mean, when you start out, you don't go that high. When it comes to setup costs, it's not exactly cheap when you think you've got to take into account that not only do you need the flyboard and the hose and the adapter kit, a sea to a trailer and a, a car that's going to get you to the water's edge. How much is that likely to run you for the full setup? All skis cost different, so for the whole setup, it just depends on the type of ski and power you want. But the actual flyboard kits and hoverboard kits, they're about 5,800. You can actually get both of them for under 10 grand. 
As the sole distributor here in Southern California, have you had many customers lining up? Yes, and we can't keep them in stock. I mean, yeah. the demand for them is really just really increasing and it's, it's awesome to see. Well, I'm mean, uh, assuming the vast majority of people are probably going to want to rent it out for a couple of hours on a Sunday afternoon. Is that a possibility as well? Yeah, yeah. We also have our rental and flight center. Rentals run you about $149 for a half an hour experience. Um, they go up to $199 for a 40 minute experience. What happens when it comes to where you can use these things? Does it vary by jurisdiction? Are there rules? It's actually coming along really well. It's not banned anywhere. It's actually a lot safer and we like to say, you know, hey, you have jet ski rental that's one of the most dangerous things on the water yeah. and, and this is a lot safer. Well, that has been an incredible day in San Diego with the brand new hoverboard. We've spent a little bit of time on it, not as much as I'd like, but uh, I've got to say, if you're into this kind of thing, then you must try and find a way to ride it. It's one of the easiest things that you'll pick up. I got it up on the second time. It's just what you imagine a hoverboard would be. When you get airborne, you're still under control, and I think that's the amazing part of it. For TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.